So it's back still 2018, and um, I've just sort of been uh, looking at uh, trying to come up with some idea, way of doing studs inside it. Back still, it's been sort of something that's been in the background for a while. So me and the uh, me and the chaps here were having a bit of a chat about it, how to come about doing it. So um, in this in this model here, you can see that I've got a, sort of a, what I call a diaphragm beam arrangement. And so I've just put a sort of a spacer tube in there and I'm just trying to basically show that uh, it is possible to create a stud. So we've actually done this through a, a bolt arrangement. So obviously we're just, just testing this at the moment, but uh, we created a different uh, assembly uh, to actually get the nut and the washer at uh, both ends. If you actually look at there, you can see there's a nut and a washer at both ends. And um, we've obviously... Uh, obviously just created one of these at the moment so there's only one in the system but and we're putting this in through the normal bolt tool so the way that you need to put in through the normal bolt grouping so you can use that to put it in um, the reason it actually came about wasn't actually because of the diaphragm arrangement there but it was actually to do with the fact I was looking at a timber job so uh, and someone asked me could I could I come up with some sort of way of um, putting a bolt through which was actually a stud so uh, it sort of led us to look into that so we um, we obviously uh, created something inside the uh, the bolts part of the uh, advanced steel management tool system so in there we've just created a, a, a simple representation here we created some rules um, we decided to go sort of in maybe five more increments and then in ten more increments and then in twenty and then in sixty but you, you could just set it up just to go in 10 more increments and then you populate your bolts uh, create your bolts inside the system um, and we obviously created a set arrangement where we added in standard washers and nuts both side of that we also set the holes here as well uh, to make sure they were round holes and the um, obviously then we just added in all the different bolts and stuff in there in length so you would need to populate the bolts tab with the lengths that you wanted in the 10 more increments to achieve what you need um, so just coming back into the the main platform here so how does this uh, how does this work and how can you how can you use it so obviously here if you had a maybe you know, I'll put some bold colors in here to show the sort of difference but if you had a an arrangement here of a channel and, and a beam you could uh, so this is a timber beam and a, and a steel channel so the first thing you need to do is obviously uh, put your UCS in so I mean you can use a number of tools to get to the UCS position I'll just use UCS object or something and just uh, pick one of these and it's important see sometimes it doesn't always come in right so obviously hopefully everybody knows how to use these little tools here so you can sort of move it around, you can pick it up, you can move it as well if you need to, so if you want to pick it and put it to a point, you can do that. Um, it's, it's obviously important with bolts, as everyone knows, I expect, to make sure that your XY plane is correct. I'm going to use a, a corner point rectangular group here, because this will give me an option to do a spacing as well. So I'm just going to pick these two here. And... Uh, to be honest, I'm going to pick a start point. So it could be any any point. So I'm actually going to pick the midpoint of the inside of the flange edge here. So it will pull some in by default, you know, not to uh, sort of hide anything here. So we haven't added it into the system. So where it's actually a stand part of the preferred arrangement. So it comes in there. Obviously, it's pulled in the assembly there. And then the important thing here is to obviously come in and, and just make the little adjustments in here. So there we've put one in, we've still got the spacing of two, so we might want a pairing in the X direction. So the intermediate spacing might be 300, so that obviously changed that out there. And the the X start distance, so we don't need to put a Y start distance in, so we just put an X start distance in here. So that'll move it along 50 mil. And then obviously, you know, if you want uh, so many of these in here, you can obviously just then populate along. And that'll add them in. So obviously you probably just need to do, have a little awareness of obviously the length of the uh, sections you're trying to bolt to, which you can find from the properties, or hopefully you've drawn it to a length that you sort of know what it is. You could use the center bolt group, put it in the center of the of the beam, and then just space it out. So it, it worked with any of the uh, standard bolt insert tools inside Advanced Steel. So uh, I'm just going to make sure I call it bolt as well. I like like to do that for my uh, numbering and naming, etc. 
helps to find it in the system so we can see that I put that in there quite quite easily um, this uh, this is just a, a standard uh, timber beam that's available inside advanced steel so um, I could come in here uh, I could change this to uh, 100 by instead of 60 at the moment I could come and change it to 100 and we can see there that the bolts actually adjusted with that so the bolt actually moved with that so you, you can change this size if you so wish so I'm going to just change it again and obviously depending upon the the lengths in the system obviously the the projection might stay uh, change here so because we're the way we've sort of done it at the moment is we're doing jumping from a five mil ten mil it sort of increments then a 20 then a 60 but as, as I said you could populate it as you require a uh, similar situation uh, obviously you might have uh, a compound beam um, I, I, I do like to use the compound beam sometimes um, this is actually a compound beam but notice I'm actually se selecting these uh, objects individually uh, a lot of people get confused with the compound beam um, a couple of little things just to remember with the compound beam is um, down the bottom here there's a couple of two tabs down the bottom here and what I do is I always set the behavior to separate and the display type to separate and then that although you're drawing it as a single beam in the system the system actually sees it as two separate beams and, and, and accordingly you can apply model roles etc so here I can apply a model role at the top level but also under its individual advanced steel properties under here I can apply model roles as well so the model role could be different for this to the main assembly it's a, it's a common thing that people don't actually uh, understand or have never experimented really I sort of played around with this I found it quite useful so again we have a, a probably a flitch plate situation I would uh, probably associate this with where the the, the steel uh, section is actually in the middle between the two timber supporting beams so the same thing I mean I might I might just move my UCS and make sure I put it in in a position that I can see so I'm just going to put it in the middle there and the same thing I'll come back to the same tool and I'll go back to here and it's important to select the uh, elements that you actually want it to pass through so that it actually puts the holes in as well through those elements so again you could pick any point so I'm just going to pick a midpoint here and again it's going to sort of bring in a bolt group it's probably going to start with that one I probably just need to go in and tweak the, uh, the start distance here in the X direction again to give me that offset and the beauty with this if you do it in a, in a group like this you'll get one label in the drawing that says so many so many studs etc on the on, on the drawing or so many bolts and it'll give it the name of the bolt that you've called it up for uh, obviously the, the whole definitions are set as well um, and uh, if I just uh, change this here to an x-ray you can see that the bolt is going right the way through here okay it's not it's not just an illusion and it, it, it is actually also the important thing to remember is it, it is actually putting the the hole in there as well in the actual flitch plate or through into the corresponding timber uh, similarly the, the other scenario that I've done here is uh, to actually um, put the timber in the middle and in this case the uh, the compound beam is actually the um, the actual plates on the outside so again I just went into the compound beam and I set the materials to be a flat and I'm controlling the the values here for the offset so you could change these values if you want so with a compound beam people don't always remember how to do this so you just just type a figure in there and it will change you can see it moves slightly away then you just change the section so if you want to go you know so just make sure you don't put a minus on the other one and you'll see the spacing increase there now sometimes obviously if you have a gap things will the bolt will shoot across um, you just need to uh, uncheck at gap in the bolt for that but but hopefully uh, you would be using a beam in in the middle actually the, the timber beam is in the middle here so you would be using an appropriate size timber beam in the middle so you would come down here uh, probably 120 200 to fill that back up again so just a little tip there with that um, another one that we've done obviously we did do the diaphragm beam because this uh, comes up quite a few times on on support people ask us about this 
So here um, we've actually created a, the same bolt has been put in place. Um, you'll notice here that there is um, there is actually a, a tube in this arrangement here. And I've just done a little quirky little thing here. I've actually drawn the piece of tube. You notice the system line is quite short in the middle there, but the, the tube is actually going out to the width between the actual compound beam. So what this actually is, is actually on the end I've used a uh, saw cut web and I've just uh, basically applied that with a zero gap at each end. And with it, with it being a joint, it then it then becomes um, interactive, I suppose, or parametric. Some people term it as. So in here, if again, if I come into the properties here, for here, so here at the moment I have this is at minus 100. So I mean, I could change this down to 90 millimeters here. For that one, I just click out. We'll see that moves, and you can see the tubes moving as well. So I'm just going to move that slightly that way there and just put 90 in here so we can see the the gap closed down between that now the beauty of this is that obviously I did toy with putting this in as a custom connection but to be perfectly honest you can probably come in and just select those three elements and come back here and use my other favorite tool which is uh, transform elements here and you can see I've been in here and done it once before, but you can actually just copy the selected objects. I didn't do include additional connections this time because that would actually copy the bulk group as well. So I'm just going to do a little preview here. And you can see with that, I've then copied along the actual uh, spacer sleeves in here. They're not actually welded, but if you wanted them welded on one side, you could just set one of the joints to have it welded and that would uh, transpose into that as well. So I'm just going to go OK to that to accept that. So we've copied that along now. We have all that in the model. And the beauty of this is that it's quite easy to maintain. You're using the compound beam property. So again, even if I did go in and change that. So if I went back into this again and went into the compound beam properties again, uh, obviously come under the sections tab in here. So I'm going to put this back to my uh, what I had before, 100 in there for that one. Just toggle, toggle that there and then put 100 in there. And we can see that's all adjusted. So I'm just going to quickly uh, run the numbering. Hopefully I've put all my model rolls in place. Okay, you see some changes there. Obviously I don't have all my model rolls in place. I've got a none there, but never mind. Um, the other thing I just wanted to show was that you could uh, should be able to get uh, an exploded uh, bolts list out of this I think so it's just processing that down in the bottom right there so with that we can see uh, the elements that we've created here the studding with the various lengths here the nuts on the end and the washers and then so that's just a list of the, the nuts and which are actually studs available actually under a bolt category. So it's possible to achieve that. Uh, obviously, you might need a little help uh, to, to do that. So uh, please reach out to Grey Tech if you think that you actually would like that. And then they'll probably be able to help you out with a little project to do that. Thank you.